Okay, so let's look at the definition of a JavaFX class and see how it takes advantage of inheritance and, for that matter, multiple inheritance. We're going to define a JavaFX class called dog, but before we do, let's take a look at a few other type definitions. In particular, let's take a look at a very simple Java class that's been defined, a class called animal. Notice that animal comes from the com intertech package. In this case, this simple Java class called animal just defines the fact that all animals should have a instance variable called legs. In this case, the default value for two is provided uh, for that legs instance variable. We also have a Java interface, a Java interface called noisemaker, also from the com intertech package. Uh, this Java interface defines the fact that all noisemakers should provide a make noise method. Lastly, we have a JavaFX class, a JavaFX class called pet that defines that all pets should have a name instance variable, which is of type string. Great, so we've got uh, this Java class, Java interface, and JavaFX class. Now, back to dog. Notice that dog extends pet, animal, as well as noisemaker. So it extends the Java class, animal, extends the JavaFX class, pet, and also actually extends the noisemaker interface, meaning essentially that we're going to have to implement that noisemaker interface in our JavaFX class. In fact, that's why the override keyword is made with the make noise method. We are overriding the interface to find make noise method inside of our JavaFX class. So we're taking advantage of multiple inheritance here. In one case, uh, inheritance from a JavaFX class. You can multiply inherit from as many JavaFX classes as you'd like. We're also inheriting from that animal class. You can inherit from one Java class. And we can also implement, or what JavaFX calls still extend, as many Java interfaces as you'd like. Now to use this dog class, or if you will, JavaFX dog class, we simply call on, if I can get my pointer down here. We'll call on the new keyword with our class name dog to create an instance of dog. And then we call on the various methods defined in dog, or actually use dog to, in this case, print out uh, what dog is all about, or use the methods in dog to actually perform some sort of functions. When we do object instantiation, we can use the new keyword, as just shown with JavaFX, However, that's kind of the Java way of doing instantiation of objects from JavaFX classes. In reality, the more appropriate way is to use the declarative approach. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at a simple JavaFX class, in this case a customer class with instance variables of name, age, and address. Now, the Java way of using that class would look something like this. We'd create a new customer, and then with that customer object reference, call on things like dot name to set its name, address, and age properties. The Java way, the, if you will, the imperative programming way of building a customer instance. The JavaFX way of instantiating a customer object would look like what we see here. Simply call on customer and provide this nifty little syntax where we provide values for each of the instance variables inside of the squiggly bracket or, if you will, expression code block to define a JavaFX customer object. Both work, uh, but the lower one is again the more JavaFX declarative way. The upper way is again more towards the imperative programming model that Java represents.